What's going on everybody? In this episode, we're going to continue our discussion on use static props inside of Next.js. Specifically, we're going to be talking about incremental static regeneration. Big fancy word. I like to keep a few of these big words in my back pocket as conversation starters. You know, my wife just loves when I talk about this stuff. Let's be like, what up, baby? Incremental static regeneration. And she's like, ooh, you're so smart. So hot. Big fancy word that basically means we can cache our data and we can occasionally update that cache so that the data on the page is not out of date. If you checked out the end of the previous episode, we had a big problem where we were getting the static content to the front end, but if we added data to our database, that was not showing up on the web page. So to review this real quick, here is our data showing up on the front end. And if we go into our database and add a customer, let's just say this person is named test and they're in the test industry. Now, when we refresh this page, nothing happens. Now, in order to get this behavior, which is the behavior you're going to have in production, you have to do npm run build and then npm run start. If you issue npm run dev, this is actually going to invoke get static props on every request, meaning when I refresh, that data is going to show up here. So definitely when you're testing out get static props, friendly reminder, don't do it in dev mode. Another friendly reminder is if you do change your code, you need to issue npm build followed by npm run again. Otherwise, you're going to be running the old built code. So you'll need to do that anytime you want to test a change or do it inside of dev, just knowing that you're not going to be able to test that cache quite like you would expect. So what exactly is caching and how do we use it inside of Next.js? Caching is widely done to improve performance but there are some challenges such as a stale cache. So sometimes with web development, things aren't working the way you'd expect and you can clear your browser cache and sometimes that'll fix the problem. However, the cache that we're talking about in this video is not the cache in a browser. Rather, this is a cache on the back end. So Next.js will gather the data from the database or from the API, build that static web page, and that static web page is going to continually be used until something triggers a refresh on that static content. So let's talk about how you can trigger a refresh. What you will do is inside of this return, there is another property called revalidate. And this takes a number of seconds, which is how often the page should be refreshed. So let's try this out. I'm gonna go with the value 60 here, which will give us plenty of time to test this. And I also wanted to give another tip, which is a little off topic. If you wanna get the suggestions for the different properties that can be used inside of an object, First off, you will want to make sure you are typed to something. So in this case, get static props, but let's just say for a moment, this was any, and this is going to introduce some other problems, but just to show you real quick, this is going to remove that convenient display. The second thing, if this is not popping up for you, you can fix that and manually cause it to pop up. Let me first get this back to how we had it with control space. I'm on Mac. I'm not sure what the windows is, but you can probably just push some buttons and find it. Now, when I was doing this originally, I was getting a bunch of snippets pop up and I just didn't like that. So what you can do is open the command palette. So we'll go to view command palette and type in settings, open user settings. And there's one in here, editor dot snippet suggestions. And I set that to none. If you don't have this line, then you can just add it. This will prevent all those snippets from popping up. And now I get the recommended suggestions for this object. So going off of the docs real quick, you can see that there are three different cache response header possibilities. I'll show you how to see these. Miss, stale, and hit. We're gonna be dealing with hit and stale here. So at first we will get hit, and that'll last about a minute when the cache has not exceeded the revalidate time. Then on that last request, we will get stale, which will then update in the background, creating a new page in the cache. And then the next time around, we will get hit. So let's test this out. First, let's go ahead and npm run build and then npm run start. So let's take a look at what we have on our page. We will do a refresh while we have the network tab open. Clicking the request, you can see in the response headers, we have x next.js cache is a hit. Now, if we go in and add some data, let's just call this one test2 and we save. Well, we go to this page, we do a refresh, and take a look, we don't have the data here, and this still says x next.js cache is a hit. So we're still being given the cached page. 
once the 60 seconds expires, our page will be outdated and it will fetch the new data in the background. So what we'll do is we'll just do a couple of refreshes, taking a look at the requests and just wait until we get a xnxjs cache is stale. And you can see there, xnxjs cache is stale. So now I expect on the next refresh, the data to now be displayed down here. And you can see test two exists now. This request is going to be a hit for the cache. So what this means is you can set that revalidate value to how often you need that page to refresh for users. So, you know, if your page is pretty not real time, you could keep it on the higher side, you know, maybe refresh every minute or every couple minutes. I don't really know what that best value should be. It's probably totally dependent on what the application is for. Now, if you have, for example, a comment feed on some social media network, you might want that feed to update every, you know, every couple seconds. So that way, you don't have to wait for minutes to see someone's response. Now the other two property options are not found, which you can use to set not found to true and redirect to a 404 page. Additionally, there is a redirect, which allows you to redirect to internal or external resources. Never would have expected it to do that. I don't really think a redirect is appropriate in our case. I think it would make more sense to make the request. And if the amount of data returned is zero, meaning there's no customers, just display no customers available. Go find customers or you're going to go broke. Now there are a few other keywords you should know about. Get server side props and get static paths. These five things here inside of the data fetching overview kind of describe the different ways of retrieving data. We are using get static props static site generation. If you have something where you want the data to be in the HTML for SEO purposes, but you need it to always make that request every single time for the new updated data, that's when server-side rendering would come in. So taking a look at this, get server-side props runs at request time, and this page will be pre-rendered with the returned props. And you should use this only if you need to render a page whose data must be fetched at request time. This could be due to the nature of the data or properties of the request, such as authorization headers or geolocation. A potential good alternative is if the page contains frequently updating data and you don't need to pre-render the data, as I mentioned earlier, for like SEO purposes, then you can just fetch the data on the client side. And a common example of this would be a dashboard page which would require a login. It's totally irrelevant for SEO purposes because that's not going to be seen by any search engines. And the data frequently updates, so request time data fetching would be appropriate. That's all we're going to be talking about in this video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one for more Next.js content.